नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देव सरस्वती व्यासम तथो जय उदीरयेष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवत उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नैष्टे ओम ज्ञान तिमरंद ज्ञानजना शलाका चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोबिस्त स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा नयम ददा स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरो वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सहगना रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पद सह गना ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधु दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिक कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वर वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमति वेदंत स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश कारिणे मंचकल्पतरूप्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी आर गोना कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम वी आर ऑन कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर फिफ्टीन एंड वी आर ऑन वर्स सिक्सटीन वेर ब्रह्मा जी वॉज डिस्क्राइबिंग नाउ द फोर कुमार वैकुंठ सो रीडिंग ऑन यी श्रेयशम नाम पनम काम दुखेमे सर्वर्तुश्रीभे बिब्रजा कवल्यम मूर्तिम इन दोज वैकुंठ प्लैनेट्स दे आर मेनी फॉरेस्ट विच आर वेरी ऑस्पिशियस इन दोज फॉरेस्ट ट्रीज आर डिजायर ट्रीज एंड इन ऑल सीजन दे आर फिल्ड विथ फ्लावर्स एंड फ्रूट्स because everything in the vaikuntha planets is spiritual and personal in the vaikuntha planets the land the trees the fruits and flowers and the cows everything is completely spiritual and personal so we are we are getting a glimpse of the spiritual world spiritual world there are many planets inside the planets now what what are there there are forests auspicious forests uh, and the trees forest means trees those desire, those trees are kalpa vriksha desire trees means they can give fulfill all the desires and in all seasons they are filled with flowers and fruits because everything in vaikuntha planets is spiritual and personal so because some many people think that oh spiritual world is nothing there is nothing there that all the variety is only in the material world everything we see is only in the material world and in the spiritual world is nothing just some light or something but we are clearly understanding that there is variety there there is animals there is fruits flowers trees forests the trees are desire trees on this material planet the trees can produce fruits and flowers according to the order of material energy but in the vaikuntha planets the trees the land the residents and the animals are all spiritual there is no difference between the tree and the animal or the animal and the man so here here everything is material we have these material bodies and we are inside the body we the spirit soul is inside the body but in the in the spiritual world we do not need a material body we do not have a material body over there we are seeing there are people there is trees there is animals but none of them have material bodies all have spiritual bodies 
So we can see that there are spiritual bodies. It's not that spiritual body means nothing or it's just energy. No. So here the word murtimat indicates that everything has a spiritual form. Formlessness as conceived by the impersonalist is refuted in this verse. In the Vaikuntha planets, although everything is spiritual, everything has a particular form. The trees and the men have form, and because all, all of them, although differently formed, are spiritual, there is no difference between them. So because everything is spiritual, although some, someone is a tree and someone is an animal or someone in, is a form of a man, there's no difference. There's no difference at all. Here we have differences, right? Because the forms are different. So the material, the consciousness is different. But over there, everything is spiritual. It's such an ananda. So the quality, the quality of everything is sat chit ananda. Is that okay? Yeah, that means everything is transcendental, right? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Everything mm -hmm. is transcendental. Oh, we can I... ask a mango from an apple tree also over there. Because they are desire wish fulfilling trees, no? We can do that. But always, what is the desire over there? How can I please Krishna? Because the love for Krishna is so much. So the, so the desire is, how can I please Krishna? But yeah, everything is transcendental. So we can see there is variety in the spiritual world. And because there is variety in the spiritual world, we have variety in the material world. Vemanikaha salanas charita nishaswad gayanti yatra shamala shapanani bhartuhu antar jale anu vikshan madhu ma dhavinam gandhe na khandi tadiyo api anilam shipantaha. In the Vaikunda planets, the inhabitants fly in their planes accompanied by their wives and consorts, and eternally sing of the character and activities of the Lord, which are always devoid of all inauspicious qualities. While singing the glories of the Lord, they deride even the presence of the blossoming Madhavi flowers, which are fragrant and laden with honey. Okay, now let's see what Prabhupada is saying. It appears from this verse that the Vaikuntha planets are full of all opulences. There are airplanes in which the inhabitants travel in the spiritual sky with their sweethearts. So we have aeroplanes here. So they also have aeroplanes in the, in the Vaikuntha planets. Rather, because there are aeroplanes in the Vaikuntha planets, we have it here in the material world. And they are traveling with their sweethearts, their consorts. There is a breeze carrying the fragrance of blossoming flowers. And this breeze is so nice that it also carries the honey of the flowers. So not only is the breeze fragrant, but it's also very sweet. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha, however, are so interested in glorifying the Lord that they do not like the disturbance of such a nice breeze while they are chanting the Lord's glories. So what is the consciousness of the Vaikuntha Vasis? They just want to glorify the Lord. Their mood is just to glorify the Lord. They are singing and chanting about his glories. Why? Because he is such a wonderful person. The Lord has so many wonderful qualities that the devotees want to speak about him. You know, like um, if our children, they do something great, then how we'll tell everyone about it. If they do something good, we want to tell everyone about it, you know. 
it's like glorifying, right? Well, you know this, oh, you know, my son did this, 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 you know, and then we want to tell. So this is what, that's because of love we do that, right? So same, the inhabitants have so much love for, for the Lord. They are always glorifying. Oh, he did this. He has this quality. You know, he's so nice. He's so wonderful. He's so sweet. Like that. Then they consider glorification of the Lord more important than their own sense gratification. Now they are so engrossed in glorifying the Lord and they are feeling so much happiness and so much enjoyment in glorifying the Lord that they don't want to think about how to fulfill their senses. In the Vaikuntha planets, there is no question of sense gratification. To smell the fragrance of a blossoming flower is certainly very nice, but it is simply for sense gratification. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha give first preference to the service of the Lord not their own sense gratification. So even though there's a nice breeze coming, there are so many fragrant flowers, you know, like we go to a nice park or some garden where there are flowers, we'll go near the flowers, take a smell, mm, so nice. But what the Vekuntavasis are doing, they are just busy glorifying the Lord. They don't even want to do that. So just imagine how sweet it is to glorify the Lord. If it wasn't, then they would be attracted to smell such a fragrant breeze, no? We all like that. We all want to enjoy. We're always looking for the higher pleasure. What's going to make me, give me more pleasure? So here we can see that pleasure in glorifying the Lord is even higher than own sense gratification. Serving the Lord in transcendental love yields such transcendental pleasure that in comparison, sense gratification is counted as insignificant. So this is because of the love, the love that the Vaikuntavasis have for the Lord. They have realized their love. This love is there in each and everyone's heart. It's there in each and every living entity. We just have to revive that love. And the process for reviving that love in Kalyug is by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. That's like chanting the glories of the Lord. So how the Vaikuntavasis are chanting the glories of the Lord in Vaikuntha, we are similarly trying to glorify the Lord here by hearing and chanting. You know, when we are chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, we are glorifying Him. That's our insignificant service to Him. Is that okay? Yes. Aravatanya Brita Sara Satchakravaka Datyu Hahamsa Shuka Titiri Barhinam Yaha Kola Halo Viramate Achira Matram Ucher Bringa Dipe Hari Katham Iva Gayamani. When the king of bees hums in a high pitch, singing the glories of the Lord. There is a temporary lull in the noise of the pigeon, the cuckoo, the crane, the chakravaka, the swan, the parrot, the partridge, and the peacock. Such transcendental birds stop their own singing simply to hear the glories of the Lord. Such a nice scene. Now we see that the bees, the king of bees, Okay, let's hear in Prabhupada's words. This verse reveals the absolute nature of Vaikuntha. There is no difference between the birds there and the human residents. We can see uh, here in the material world, a human being and a bee is different, right? There's, well, we are all spirit souls, so that there is no difference there, but the body, you know, the consciousness is different. The activities are different. Okay, so in the situation in the spiritual sky is that everything is spiritual and variegated. Spiritual variegated means variegatedness means that everything is animate. There is nothing inanimate. Even the trees, the ground, the plants, the flowers, the birds, and the beasts are all on the level of. Krishna consciousness. So every, 
everyone there is Krishna conscious. The special feature of Vaikuntha Lok is that there is no question of sense gratification. In the material world, even an ass enjoys his sound vibration. But in the Vaikunthas, such nice birds as the peacock, the chakravak, and the cuckoo prefer to hear the vibration of the glories of the Lord from the bees. So the bees are humming the glories of Krishna. And so all these wonderful birds which make wonderful noises. You know, cuckoo is supposed to be sweet, right? Chakravaka, I'm not sure what, what bird is that. But anyway, per parrot, swan, partridge, peacock, these are beautiful birds, pigeons. They also stop. They want to hear the glories of Krishna. They want to hear, oh, what is being said? How glorified, how wonderful is Krishna? How sweet is Krishna? How sweet it is to hear the glories of Krishna. And so they are feeling happy just hearing the glories of Krishna. They don't want to hear their own, own glories here. Such a nice analogy Prabhupada has put here. That in the material world, even an ass enjoys his sound vibration, you know, like because a donkey brays, right? So he's feeling happy. Oh, I'm, I'm such a great singer. He likes to hear his own sound, although it's just brain. But that's what, you know, oh, I'm so great kind of a thing. But in the Vaikuntha planets, everyone is glorifying the Lord. So now we can see why we are here in the material world. Huh? It's so evident then. Because over there, even if you want to be a bird or a bee, what they are busy doing is they are glorifying the Lord. But we want to glorify our own self. We want to say, oh, how great I am. See how great I speak. And so in the material world, even an ass enjoys his own vibration. That's why we are here in the material world. Because we want to glorify ourselves. You know, so then over there, nobody's going to listen to us if we are going to glorify ourselves. Nobody's going to encourage us in that. You know, everybody is busy glorifying Krishna or Lord Narayan. Any comments? So that means we were actually in a spiritual world and then we chose to come here because we wanted to be like, like Krishna, like master. Is it mm. like that? <laughs> so from many, many times devotees would ask Prabhupada. Yeah. So was I there in the spiritual world? If I was there, why did I leave Krishna? Mm. So you it know, was then like Prabhupada mm. would say, of course, we have the... Prabhupada would answer it differently at different times. Sometimes he would say, see, now you have a disease, right? You're cut, you have malaria. Now you will say, let me find out which mosquito bit me. Or will you say, okay, let me go get medicine. So Prabhupada would say, don't try to find out where you, like, were you there or no? Just chant Hare Krishna and you will go back there. And then sometimes he would say, yes, we have a independent choice. We have a choice whether we want to be with Krishna or no. And so we said, okay, Krishna, I don't want you. I want to enjoy separate from you. That's why we are here in the material world. And then sometimes Prabhupada would say, when we go back to the spiritual world, we won't even realize that we were here in this material world. Everything will be forgotten because time is eternal in the, right? Time is eternal. Mm. And so once we are back there, it will be like a short moment of a nightmare. Oh, for a short moment, I forgot you, Krishna. What, what, I was stupid. I'm like, what is this? And, you know, again, we are happily engaging in pastimes with him. Mm. So, yeah. But, but one thing we have to be, one guarantee we have. Once we go back, we are never coming back here again. You know, once we go back to the spiritual world, we are never coming back. Why? Because we've already tasted, we've seen that there is no pleasure here without Krishna. 
you know, once bitten, twice shy, right? Mm -hmm. We already know that there is no pleasure without Krishna. So we don't want to be without him. So we are happy to be with him and, and experience the greatest pleasure, enjoy the most. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the choice is ours. Like Duryodhan, Krishna was in front of Duryodhan. But Duryodhan didn't want Krishna. He wanted Krishna's uh, army, Krishna's uh, horses and all those things. But he didn't want Krishna. So because of that choice, yeah, so because of that choice, we are here. So reading on Mandara Kunda Kurabot Palacham Pakarna Punaga Naga Bakulam Bujapari Jataha Gandir Chite Tulasi Kabharane Natasya Yasmims Tapaha Sumana Subahu Manayanti. Although flowering plants like the Mandara Kunda Kurabaka, Utpala, Champaka, Arna, Punaga, Naga, Keshara, Bakula, Lily, and Parija are full of transcendental fragrance. They are still conscious of the austerities performed by Tulasi. For Tulasi is given special preference by the Lord who garlands himself with Tulasi leaves. The importance of Tulasi leaves, well, we can say Tulsi or Tulasi, whatever, you know, is very clearly mentioned here. Tulasi plants and their leaves are very important in devotional service. Devotees are recommended to water the Tulasi tree every day and collect the leaves to worship the Lord. One time, an atheistic Swami remarked, what is the use of watering the Tulasi plant? It is better to water eggplant. By watering the eggplant, one can get some fruits. But what is the use of watering the tulasi? These foolish creatures, unacquainted with devotional service, sometimes play havoc with the education of people in general. So yeah, many people give their opinions, you know. We can all give our opinions, but does it mean that we are right? Not necessary, right? Many times our opinions are mostly faulty if it is, you know, not backed by Shastra. But here in Bhagavatam, we are hearing that even such um, flowers, Champaka, Kunda, Mandara, para, Parichat, Lily, I mean, you know, these are supposed to be very fragrant flowers. They still are giving respect, more respect to Tulasi because they know that she's very dear to Krishna. She's very, very dear to Krishna. He wears garlands of Tulasi leaves. He, um, he accepts boga with Tulasi leaves. Then he's, um, you know, he uh, at the her. lotus feet. I'm sorry? He married her also, Tulsi. He married her, yeah. Yeah, the Tulsi Vivaha. Yeah, Tulsi Vivaha. Yeah. So she is very dear to him. So there are some people who might say, you know, oh, what is this you're doing? Just go water an eggplant and eat an eggplant rather. Don't listen to them because they themselves don't. Full, they are called foolish. What comparison? I'm sorry? <laughs> what comparison they do? <laughs> yeah, what comparison? Yeah, exactly. You know, so we, we have to be careful of who we are listening to, you know, because everybody... You see, many people talking is free, no? Yeah, talking is free, right? We don't have any charge when we talk. So many of us just talk whatever we want to talk. Huh? So then now we have to be careful of what we are going to hear and what we are going to believe in. So that, that discrimination we have to do. Okay. The most important thing about the spiritual world is that there is no envy among the devotees there. This is true even among the flowers, which are all conscious of the greatness of Tulsi. 
in the Vaikuntha world entered by the four Kumaras, even the birds and flowers are conscious of service to the Lord. So what is very evident here in the material world is envy, envy of each other. Now we might say, no, I'm not envious of you and you are not envious of me, but we are each and every person living entity is potentially envious of another. Only when we try to revive our Krishna consciousness, we try to give this Krishna consciousness to others, are we trying to get out of this envy? What is the envy? That we are all keeping us here, envy or even of ourselves, that we are keeping us ourselves here in the material world. You know, uh, keeping us ourselves in the darkness, in the illusion, uh, keeping us selves away from the truth and then keeping others away from the truth, away from who they truly are. That's the reason the devotees are so compassionate. They are non-envious, non-envious. What does that mean? Because they love, they love Krishna so much and they understand Krishna's heart, that Krishna loves everyone. And so they also love everyone. And so they want to see everyone happy. And they know that they can, uh, everyone can be happy only when we are situated in our original loving position with Krishna. And so they want to give this um, Krishna consciousness to everyone, spread the holy name to everyone. That is true non-enviousness. Is that okay? So we should also try to give this Krishna consciousness to everyone, encourage everyone to hear and chant about Krishna. But we shouldn't say, hey, you, you stupid, you don't know what's the Kalyug, uh, what is the realization? I mean, what's the perfection? I'm greater than you. Follow me, chant. No, not in that mood, you know. They're just going to irritate people that way. And it's not good for our egos. With all respect, with all humility, with because we, we need to respect everyone, right? Respect everyone. So try to encourage them. Try to add, tell them, oh, would you like to, you know, try to hear and chant this Hare Krishna mantra, revive your original position. What, like, you know, in a, in a very, uh, very humble way, in a very friendly way, in a very respectful way. Because everybody has their own uh, beliefs. And then when we are, we are following a particular belief, we get very attached to it, you know? So with due respect, then we try to introduce them to chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Shall we stop here for today? So, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, so that means that when, because we are envious, right? So if we are giving Krishna to others, our enviness also becomes less towards others? Yes. Okay. Because we want them to be truly happy. Mm. And we can be truly happy when we are situated in our original position, okay. in our loving relationship with Krishna. Okay. But we shouldn't be proud that, oh, see, we are doing this. So exactly. This. Yeah. But you know, we, we don't, is it that we don't need to tell anybody or because in our own heart, we are not proud, right? That would, Krishna would notice that. I'm sorry? Krishna would notice our intentions, like in my heart, what we are serving and what we are doing, we are doing it to please Krishna. Yeah. And when we are giving others, hmm. Krishna, we hmm. need to give Krishna other to hmm. others, encourage okay. others to chant in okay. a mood of, in a mood that I have no qualification. Who am I? You know, hmm. I am no, I have no qualification. Let me just be an instrument in the hands of Krishna. I am just an instrument. We are all instruments actually in the hands of Krishna. That's why Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, Nimitta Matra Savya Sachi. We are all instruments. Depends, do we want to be an instrument of 
envy? Do we want to be an instrument of anger? We want to be an instrument of greed. We want to be an instrument of uh, hatred. Or do we want to be an instrument of love, an instrument of compassion, an instrument of mercy? The choice is ours. So when we are trying to encourage others to chant Hare Krishna, try in that mood that I'm just an instrument, my dear Krishna, please use me as an instrument of your love. We have nothing, we have no qualification. We are just trying to encourage, uh, you know, others because Krishna is in their heart. So we are just trying to encourage them, oh, chant Hare Krishna and reestablish your loving relationship with Krishna that we can do. Okay. Whether they take up the process, they don't take up the process, that leave it to Krishna. That's between them and Krishna. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, so that is very important huh? because, because if we say, oh, I am uh, like, you know, I am so great, I'm giving Krishna. No, no, we have no qualification, no qualification at all. And in a mood of humility, in a mood of, uh, of uh, just being an instrument, just an instrument. Like it's the Radhanath Maharaj always gives that example, you know, that a surgeon he uses a scissor to perform surgery. Now, if the scissor starts saying, how great I am, I'm such a great scissor. I did such a nice surgery. What do we say about the scissor? It's, but the surgeon chose the scissor, no? the surgeon who performed the surgery. He just used the scissor. He could have used any other scissor. But he chose this scissor. Similarly, we should also feel that, oh, Krishna is giving me the service to do. I should, I am so grateful to you, Krishna, because you don't need me to do this service. You could do it using someone else or by doing it yourself. You are the Paramatma in everyone's heart. You could have inspired this person to chant by themselves. But you still chose me. You're so kind. You're so great. You're so merciful. You're giving me an opportunity to render some insignificant service to you, to perform some insignificant service to Lord Chaitanya, to, to Shla Prabhupada. So kind you are, Krishna. So in that mood. Is that okay? Yeah, just like Arjuna. Arjuna was uh, made Nimitta Matram. Like uh, uh, Shri Krishna said in 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, like you have to become a sadhan, the instrument, Nimitta Matram Bhava Sarvya Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Just an instrument. But also then we shouldn't say, yes, I'm such a great instrument. Yeah. That, that you know? humility is uh, always, yeah. humility should be always there. Yeah. Then we should feel grateful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yes, then we should feel grateful that Krishna is giving us a in this service. Do service. Yeah. 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 So that's for every everything, you know, that gratitude, that humility. We need to uh, develop that more and more because that's our honest and true position, actually. Yeah, humility is very, 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 very important. The first step, I think, is yes, humility. Yeah, humility. and then uh, no? to become yeah. humble, how do we become humble? We need to be honest. Mm. Only when we are honest, when we are able to understand, oh, what is actually my position? What is my qualification? What do I actually have? Then automatically we become humble, you know? <clears throat> and then gratitude then we can be grateful. So we have to learn to become honest. <clears throat> because sometimes we, we think, oh, humility means um, if I'm, I'm, I'm praising this person, so I'm humble and I'm giving him so much praise, or you know, if I'm thinking very low of myself and, you know, but that's not real true humility. Humility, we need to become honest. What is actually my position? So we have to try to cultivate it, you know. 
And it's an ongoing process, ongoing. On, like we sing, oh, right now I'm so humble, you know. <laughs> My God, what did I work for? <laughs> no, but like how, like when you speak to another person, speak with humility. Oh, speak with kindness. Kindness, oh, yes. humility. Yes. You. The speech, our speech should yes. be, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. how the speech should be pleasing. It should be pleasing with kindness. We should not hurt another. Don't put others in anxiety. You're going to read more and more in Bhagavad Gita about how to, how even mode of the speech in the mode of goodness is. Yeah, it's important, important very important. Yeah. So, did anybody else want to add anything or share anything? Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. Hey, Hare Bari. Krishna Mataji, my humble obeisances. I just wanted to add, Mataji, that uh, I mean, you have said it very, very nicely. Just wanted to add that um, uh, our Guru Maharaj always used to say um, that we must think that um, I'm the servant and Krishna is the master. So if we keep keep saying that, following the Isha Vashiyam principle, then the humility will also slowly grow in our heart also. That's all, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. To keep reminding ourselves of, our, of our true position. Yes, thank you. Anything else? If no, then we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for joining in today morning. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Premande, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.